Hey YouTube, Mark Kaufman here, and today I want to talk about this knife right here. This is the Victorinox Evolution 13, and it actually combines two of my favorite Swiss Army knives. That is the Wenger Commander and the Victorinox Sportsman. Now, these two knives have to be probably in my top five favorite Swiss Army knives. They are essentially the same knife with many of the same functions, but different styled tools. Now, really quick before I get into this one and what I like and don't like about it is that this one has the standard Victorinox spear point blade, whereas the Wenger actually has the, I guess, more bellied or taller stainless steel blade. Then over on the can opener side, Wenger chose to use the standard claw or lobster claw style can opener. Victorinox uses their proprietary uh, design, which combines a flathead screwdriver and a can opener, whereas this is just a can opener. And then Victorinox uses their um, bottle cap opener or cap lifter, whereas Wenger uses their special cap lifter, and this uses their lock uh, mechanism here. <coughs> Excuse me. And this lock actually presses inward as you are using it. So when you press against something, the screwdriver itself actually goes in and locks into place. Then on this end here, we have a fingernail file and it is facing outward. Whereas on the Victorinox, the fingernail file is facing inward towards the blade. So it's on that end there. And what that actually does is it scratches up your blade pretty nicely, as you can see there. So that's something I don't like. Then you also have the corkscrew. Corkscrew for me, I believe, are both the same. Um, I don't really see a difference in them. Their material seems to be the same, and they seem to do the same job. Now, the Wenger actually has a little cutout here so you can access the awl. And then Victorinox doesn't, you have to access it by getting in between the corkscrew. So there you go. And then when it comes to the toothpick and tweezers, Wenger went in a concealed fashion. You have to go in to the spring, whereas on the Victorinox you go out. So that is really quickly what those two knives are. And then this one here, actually uses Wenger's Evolution scales. So I don't actually have one of Wenger's Evolution series knives. I'm still hunting for one. However, Wenger went from this style knife to this style handle. And the way you're actually supposed to hold this, and this was in their catalog folders, uh, not folders, um, their catalog photos. And you're supposed to put your thumb here and then your palm is supposed to rest right in this groove here. So when you actually have the knife open, you have this kind of hold. So, I mean, it's, it's comfortable, but I mean, it's not absolute perfection, especially if you're holding it this way, it feels good. Your fingers go right there and then your thumb kind of goes right there. And it's, it, it's, it's good. It's a very good hold, except the downside of this is you gain a lot of chunkiness in the pocket. This is 85 millimeters. This is 84. But when it comes to like bulk, you actually get quite a bit of um, additional size there. So really quick on this end here, we've got a height of, and I'm going to try and get in between there. We've got a height of... 22.9 over here and we're going to have to remove the micro screwdriver to get an accurate reading. We've got a height. We didn't have to move, remove that actually 18. So we've got about, I'm going to just put it right here. Actually, 
we've got a height of 19. So you've got an additional thickness for this bulbous end. And then for the top section, you have 20 millimeters. Top section here, you've got 16, 16 millimeters. So you get a little bit of additional thickness in the width. Now in the thickness here, you've got 17 at the highest point. Then over here, you've got 13. So you've got width and then you've got a little bit more girth on this. So you've got a very grippy handle, but it's a little more chunky and I think it's it feels a little more clumsy, but it's nice. It's not bad. <clears throat> now, the reason why this has quickly become one of my favorite Swiss Army knives is because it combines both of these knives. Um, Wenger actually acquired Victoria, uh, no, no, Victorinox actually acquired Wenger and they gradually started to implement changes in Wenger's line. They discontinued a lot of the unnecessary models Wenger made and they made some specialty models. They even made one with like a uh, ski wrench in it and a, um, a bike wrench and they, they had very specific models. <clears throat> but for Victorinox, they gradually went over to just branding everything as theirs. But when it came to Wenger's models, they branded them under the Victorinox Delamont line. And they kept making those in the Wenger factory, whereas Victorinox makes all of theirs in the Victorinox factory. So, and that is in Ebok, and then this is in Delamont. So, We've got that going. So here, really quick, we're going to check and see what the size difference is on the blades here because I actually feel like there's a little bit of a difference in the shape of these two blades. Um, there is a little bit of, I think, a little more height, at least down in this section, for the Victorinox versus the Wenger. And I feel like there's a little bit of a change in the tang. I don't know if that's going to come out on the screen here, but it's just my eyes feel like there's a little bit of a change there. The nail nick in the Victorinox is actually bigger than the Wenger, and it's deeper. So they, they've gone with a deeper nail nick and a little bit more blade, and I'm talking a little bit in the height. Now when it comes to comparing it to the Victorinox, the nail nick is actually still very big, which is nice. It, it allows you to grip the blade very quickly. Spring tension is about the same as the Wenger. So here we have Wenger's um, cap lifter and we have, again, Wenger's cap lifter. However, in this handle, we have less of the cap lifter showing. So it's gonna be a little bit more of an accurate push to get a wire in here versus here because you've got just a little bit of give. If you hit over here, it can slide over there. If you've just got more showing on this end than here and that's probably because of the extension of the handle. The same system works on the cap lifter. You push this in, it locks in place. You push that in, it locks in place. I find that to be a very nice feature. One of the nice things is they've kept the fingernail file from the Wenger and they put it on the Victorinox. Let me get a little more light in here. So the Victorinox actually still has the same fingernail file as the Wenger. Now one of the things I noticed when I got this knife in the mail and let me remove this here. Got this in the mail. First thing that stood out to me was the corkscrew had like a darker metal to it. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm gonna combine both of these together, kind of screw them into each other, but you can see the change or the difference in the metals. Now, I don't know if that's just this one, but it looks like my Victorinox Delamont Evolution 13 actually has 
like a darker steel or even a coating on it. I don't know. I, I'm actually having another one of these come in. Not this exact model, but a similar model. And I'm going to see if it's the same darkness. But it, it's, it's got a dark hue to it. Whereas every other tool has that shine. This looks like it has a coating. Now, one of the things that I really did like is they got rid of this, this um, divot here for the awl. I actually don't feel like this divot here is very attractive. It kind of breaks up the, the, the flow of the knife. So when it came to the Victorinox from Delamont, they actually went with their awl. And their awl you access through right here. So you have a nice flow on both sides. Now, when it came to the can opener, Victorinox implemented their own, whereas on the Vanger, it was a lot different. So I actually prefer this one. This one here has a lot more uses to me than this one. Now, when it came to a few other differences I saw, obviously the scales are different from the Vanger. Over here, the scales are obviously different. But one of the things that was very different is actually something that I removed. I actually installed a Victorinox um, from Ebok key ring. And that key ring actually is made out of like a different metal or, or a different alloy of metal. Because the one that came on here on the Victorinox from Delamont was actually this kind of key ring. And it was exactly this key ring. I, I have that somewhere in a bag, but I just didn't bring it out for the video. But it had this same key ring, kind of goldish nickel plated. And I have actually seen these older key rings where the nickel plating is coming off. So, and you can see that right in the middle there in the back, the nickel plating is coming off. This is a cheaper key ring. The key ring here is not as strong. The tension is not as strong as the one from the Ebok factory. And what I actually like about the Victorinox key rings is when somebody gives you a spare key, you can throw that spare key on this key ring and then throw it on your keys and you kind of have it separated from your main keys. So that's what I do a lot with these smaller key rings is whenever somebody gives me a new key, I might throw it on that and it's usually a temporary thing. So that is a few of the differences here. I personally feel that this one the Evolution 13 is going to be a new favorite of mine. Yes, it's going to be a little bit more bulbous. It's going to be a little more, um, uh, it's going to take up a little more room in your pocket, but compared to the Sportsman, I think it adds a few new features, which makes this knife just a little more interesting than your standard Vic. And I just really, really like that. I find that to be a very attractive thing and being able to experience some of the tools off of the Wenger knives and see it on a Victorinox. Sometimes you can't find these. You just can't. And you can't find them in this condition. Usually they're just beat to heck. And being able to experience a Wenger in some kind of fashion is a nice thing. And I think that's a very good thing that Victorinox did is they allow people to experience both companies in some way or form. So I thought you guys would enjoy seeing what I recently picked up and why I like it so much. So till the next one, I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.